four, bank services. Chapter opener. Say it with flowers has always had special meaning for Jill Owens. Today she owns and operates her own flower shop, Flower Power. The shop sells cut flowers, floral arrangements for every occasion, and gift plants. As her business has grown, one of the most important decisions made by Jill Owens was selecting a bank that would offer her the services to help her operate the business profitably and with the greatest efficiency. Knowing about each service that a bank offers can help anyone, regardless of whether they own or operate a business. Section 4.1, Checking Accounts and Check Registers. Definitions. Electronic commerce, where goods are purchased and sold electronically. Personal checking accounts, or checking accounts used by individuals. Flat free checking account. For a fixed charge per month, the bank supplies the checking amount, a supply of printed checks, a bank charge card, an ATM card, a debit card, and a host of other services. Interest paid is the interest paid on an account balance and is common with personal checking accounts. Automated teller machine a bank account that automatically transfers funds from one account to another. Electronic banking, banking activities that take place over a network such as the World Wide Web. Definitions continue. Debit card, a card that results in a debit to a bank account when the card is issued for a purchase. Point of sale terminal, a machine that allows a customer to make purchases using a credit or debit card. Maintenance charge per month, the charge to maintain a checking account, usually determined by the minimum balance in the account. Per debit charge, a charge per check. Balance brought forward, or current balance, the amount left in the checking account after previous checks written have been subtracted. Here we will identify the parts of a check. We'll start at the far left and write the amount of check in words using and to represent the decimal point. Draw a heavy wavy line from the end of the written amount to the word dollars. Write clearly in ink the name of the person or place receiving the check, payee. Here we have a name and address of the account holder, bank and federal reserve number, and check number are all pre-printed on each check. You should clearly and correctly date each check. You should write the amount of the check close to the dollar sign so additional digits cannot be added by others. Always sign checks with the same signature, the payor. And just note that the numbers along the bottom row are printed in magnetic ink. When the check is processed, the amount of the check is imprinted here and it should match the check amount. The check number appears here and also in the upper right corner. Here we have the check number. Here's the bank number or the routing number and we should always indicate a reason for writing the check. Calculate the monthly service charges. We see in the chart below the average balance, the maintenance charge per month, and the per check charge. For an average balance of less than 500, the maintenance charge per month is $12. The per check charge is 50 cent. For an average balance of between 500 and 1999 we see there's a seven dollars and fifty cent monthly charge and a twenty dollar per check charge for an average balance between two thousand and four thousand nine hundred and ninety nine we see there's a five dollar and twenty five cent maintenance charge per month and an eight cent per check charge and for an average balance of five thousand dollars or more there is no maintenance charge or per check charge. 
Example, calculate the monthly service charge to Flower Power if there is an average balance of $3,003 with 40 checks written. Here's the solution. $3,003, the range is in between $2,000 and $4,999, so the maintenance charge per month is $5.25. The cost for writing 40 checks, the per check charge is 8 cents, so we multiply 8 cents times 40 checks for a product of $3.20, so the monthly service fee is $8.45. Identify the parts of a check stub. Here we see the check number, there's a place for the date, there's a place for the amount of the check. In the two section, we place the name of the person or firm to whom the check is made, the payee. In the four section, we write the purpose of the check. In the balance brought forward section, we write the balance in the account, and this is the balance from the bottom of the previous check stub. In the amount deposited, it's the total deposits made since last check. In the total area, we simply add the balance in the account and the total deposits made since last check. In the amount of this check section, we simply write the amount of the check is the same as the third step. And the balance brought forward or the current balance, we simply subtract the total from the amount of this check. Complete the balance column in the check register. We can see in the check register below, the first column is the check number. The next column is a place for the date. In the next column, we see to whom the check is issued to. There's a column for the amount of the check, a column for the date of deposit, a column for the amount, and a column for the balance. We can see in this example that the balance brought forward or the current balance is $9,628.35. On October the 4th, there was a check issued to Delta Contractors, so we subtract $215.71 from our balance. Again, on the 5th, there were two debits. There was a check issued to Hand Fabricating for $500, excuse me, for $573.78. We subtract that from our balance. Also, photo specialties, we subtract $112.15, which gives us a total of $8,726.71. There were two deposits made, one on the 6th for $753.28. We add that to our total. Another deposit on the 8th for $1,475.69. So we add that to our balance, which gives us a balance of $10,955.68. On the 9th, there was a check issued to Young Marketing. So we subtract that amount from our balance. On the 11th, there was a check written to Wholesale Supply. We subtract that amount from our balance. On the 11th, there was an ATM purchase for fuel for $65.62. We subtract that from our balance, which gives us a total of $9,825.58. On the 14th, there was a check issued to the Light and Power Utilities for $248.17. We subtract that from our balance. There was another deposit on the 16th, so we add that amount to our balance, which gives us a balance of $9,913.26 and on the 16th there was a check issued to the license board for $450.50. We subtract that from our balance which gives us a current balance of $9,462.76.